Hello everyone, this is Jason from Primetime Aquatics and today we're very excited. We're going to be talking about something that may be in your tank, but it isn't fish. And so what we're going to be talking about today is the freshwater hydra. Some people consider them to be a pest and to be problematic. Well, we're going to look at them. How do they get in your tank? What do they eat? Why might they be a problem? And we're also going to look at how to get rid of them. So stay tuned. Okay, so I wanted to bring us back to the peacock gudgeon tank. Uh, this 20 long has had an issue with freshwater hydra for quite some time, although the problem is getting better and we will discuss why that is. But the freshwater hydra first appeared in this tank and they appeared initially as little white spots and then kind of like little white stringy things. Still very difficult to discern what they were. Luke was the first one to notice them. And at the time they kind of looked like a, maybe a little bit of biofilm. But let's go ahead, let's get in a little bit closer. And we can see now they're actually green in color, but they, at least for us, they started out white. And we're gonna zoom in a little bit more. And look at that. You can start to see that it's definitely not algae. And if I can get the camera to focus, now we start to see, let's get in a little bit closer. You can see that they've got this long stalk and then like right up in here towards the top. They've also got these tentacles that are hanging down and that one right in the center is actually budding a brand new hydra. And so that's what's all over the glass as we can see right now. And it's actually really good right here. You can see with a darker background, you can see some of the tentacles hanging down, the fact that they are attached by what's known as a foot and so what we're going to do, I actually was able to take some microscopic video. Uh, and so we're going to look at the hydra under a microscope. And I'm going to talk more about their anatomy, their physiology, what they are. And then we'll talk about what we do about them. Okay, so what you're looking at here is an up close and personal picture of hydra. This is magnified using a compound light microscope at about 400, uh, about 100 times. So these organisms belong to a phylum called the Cnidaria, and there's about 9,000 species. Most of them are saltwater. Just very few of them are actually freshwater. Uh, mostly what they have in common is they have radial symmetry, which means that they're kind of cylindrical in the way they look. They also have sensory receptors on the outsides of their body, so they can kind of sense what's going on. And then what's kind of cool about them as well is, as a group, they have something called a gastrovascular cavity which means they only have one opening in their body, and that is a mouth, but that also serves to get rid of waste products. Now, this particular organism that we're dealing with is in the class Hydrozoa, of which there are only uh, a couple of species, and what they have in common is they have the specialized cells called cnidocytes, and they're on the outside of the cell, on the epiderm or on the outside of the organism, on the epidermis, and what they do is they're involved in defense and feeding and attachment. Now they have a, a specialized type of nidocyte called a nematocyst and this one in particular is involved in capturing prey and in defending itself and you can see here right now this one is kind of contracting and that's because it has uh, a gastrovascular cavity and the center part of the organism can kind of contract because it actually has a hydrostatic skeleton. So like people and fish, we've got bones. These things don't have any bones. What they have is the ability to regulate their water inside their bodies. And if they close their mouth and they bring in a lot of water, that can make them elongate. Where if they open their mouth and expel the water, that's what makes them contract so quickly. So they, for the most part, they only have a few main parts to their body. They've got a foot, what we're looking at here is part of the gastrovascular cavity uh, and then also you see the tentacles and right in the center of those tentacles that's where the mouth is that's where that single opening is which is pretty cool now what makes them and this is a little baby one that we see here another thing that makes them interesting is that as a group they exist in two main forms what we're looking at here is the polyp form and again we see the foot on the far left hand side that's where it's attaching and then we've got the gastrovascular cavity and the tentacles. That's the polyp. A lot of these organisms also have a medusal stage, which is a modal stage that allows them to swim around and it's more of a reproductive feature. The organisms that we're looking at here, they don't have that. 
All right, we only they only have this polyp stage that we're looking at here. And so the way they reproduce, as we saw earlier on the surface of the glass in the fish tank, is they will have a little organism that kind of buds out from that, and they will continually reproduce that way. So this thing is the reason why um, it's the reason why it's a little bit of a pest is on the tentacle area that we're looking at and in the body they have these nematocysts and what they do is think of them as almost like tiny little daggers they can be used to capture prey like live baby brine shrimp or maybe smaller organisms but they're also used in defense and so if you've ever noticed in some of your fish tanks where you've got shrimp and the shrimp land on hydra you'll notice that they, they jerk away very quickly or small fry they may do the same where they get close to the hydra and then they swim away very abruptly and the reason for that is these organisms will in a sense stab what they think might be a potential predator and here you can actually see one of the little hydra budding isn't he cute uh, right there the little dark green guy he's starting to uh, bud from another one but what's happening then is that these guys are stinging shrimp they're stinging fry and while if shrimp are full grown and full grown fish it doesn't tend to bother them much but if you've got brand new shrimplets or you've got very tiny fry and these things are stabbing them think of it as like getting stabbed by a bee or a wasp over and over and over again that can create problems it can cause the the shrimp or the fry to become stressed to damage their immune system uh, it may also um, make them not want to eat right and so uh, if they're continually being stabbed that's where the problems come in and so that's why we want to get rid of them and in a few minutes we're going to talk about exactly how that happens but I thought it would be pretty cool to kind of show you these guys up close and personal right around a hundred times magnification you can see how they interact you can see the tentacles you can see how that foot attaches to a surface and for the most part when we're talking about a fish tank uh, they are going to release that foot that little sticky end that you see there and they can float to other parts of the fish tank and attach to substrate attached to driftwood and plants I've e even seen them attached to the shells of ram's horn snails which is kind of interesting uh, they'll attach to glass and that's pretty much how they get around so it's not like they're going to be swimming through the tank quickly or anything like that but they can just release themselves and even kind of do like an inchworm thing across a substrate just to kind of get around. You can see again the contractions and the elongation which is really interesting and again that's that uh, uh, hydrostatic skeleton that allows them to control how much water is being expelled as you just saw there and then as they take water in that can kind of firm up their body and elongate them a little bit but it's a really fascinating little organism and now we're going to talk a little bit about okay what do we do with them? All right, everyone. So now that we know a little bit more about their anatomy, their physiology, what they eat, how they protect themselves, what do you do about them? So let me tell you what we've done in this tank and what we're doing in other tanks. So first, all of the tanks, as I've mentioned, all of the tanks that we have here in the fish room that have hydra have one thing in common. And that one thing in common is that we've been feeding those tanks live baby brine shrimp because we have fry in those tanks and that really consists of about four of the tanks in our fish room the rest of them there are no visible hydra whatsoever so to combat the hydra at least in this tank here we're reducing the amount of live baby brine shrimp we feed to the fish not just because we want to reduce the hydra but because these fish are getting older and we're transitioning them to flake foods and pellet foods and so that has reduced the numbers quite a bit the other thing that you could do potentially is add in a fish that will eat the hydra and so there are reports that sparkling garamis and blue garamis will eat hydra i have not tried that here but i have a good reason to believe that they would be successful in doing so the problem is and the problem that a lot of us face is if we have hydra in a tank it's usually for one of two reasons one we've got fry in the tank and we've been feeding live foods so adding a larger garami is not going to work because the fry are going to go bye bye and two maybe we're keeping shrimp in the tank and so again, if we add a larger fish, all of our shrimplets will be gone. And so that isn't going to work. And so if you have the ability to add maybe a sparkling garami, which don't get very big, or even a blue garami, which do get a little larger, you could certainly go that route. 
The other thing you could do, and one of the things that we've done in this tank is it seems to be helping a little bit, is the common pond snail has been reported to eat hydra. Uh, I am finding that to be, they're not aggressively eating the hydra, but I do believe that they are consuming some of the hydra. In fact, I added just a couple of pond snails in here a few weeks ago, and we can see we've got quite a few, which I'm fine with because they are doing a couple things for us. One, they may be consuming the hydra, although I don't have any video to show that that is the case. But the other important thing that they are doing is consuming waste products. And because they're consuming waste products, less waste is available for small microscopic organisms that may be a food source for the hydra. And so that could certainly be an advantage. You could try something like a coopermine or a copper-based um, anti-parasitic sort of medication. Again, the problem with that is fish don't sometimes tolerate that particularly well, although in my experience, most fish do. Plants will not. They'll kill plants. Uh, a copper-based anti-parasitic uh, anti will kill all your invertebrates as well. And if you've got fry in the tank, that's going to be a little bit harsh on the fry. So that may not be an option. So what we have found, a combination of adding snails, reducing the amount of live food that we feed, and instead feeding the flakes and the pellets, seems to be reducing the amount of hydra that we have. And so as we hopefully become more successful with this, uh, we will update you guys. Uh, the other thing you could potentially do is take an algae scraper and scrape it off. That will reduce the amount of visible hydra temporarily, but no, because they are capable of budding, they will regrow and they may regrow in higher numbers if you haven't addressed the nutrient issue. So hope you found that useful and, and helpful. We wanted to address, again, some of the microorganisms or smaller organisms that we find in fish tanks that aren't directly you know, linked to fish and invertebrates. And we're gonna be doing more of this stuff. And so we'll talk a little bit more about some of the microbes, some of the single-celled organisms, try to get those on the microscope so that you can see them as well. If you like this video, subscribe, share it. We really appreciate you watching and we'll see you in the next one. Thank you. Hello everyone, Captain America here. And just remember, if I can be Hydra, so can you. Good luck and try your best.